right. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm Shauna Lawson, Assistant Director of Alumni Relations and Annual Giving at UW Tacoma. Congratulations to the class of 2022. We're so proud of you and your accomplishments. Thank you for joining us for the 2022 grad experience for our Husky alumni panel about getting the job, pandemic, post-pandemic and beyond. We will start with the Share the Land Acknowledgement. We recognize that all of us at UW Tacoma learn, live, and work on or near the ancestral homeland of the Coast Salish people. In particular, we are situated on the traditional territory of the Puyallup. As people on this occupied territory, we have a responsibility to acknowledge the land, the ancestors who have cared for this land since time immemorial, and all our indigenous connections today. We also have the responsibility to acknowledge the histories of dispossession and forced removal that have allowed for the growth and survival of this institution. In light of this history, let us take active efforts to partner with our indigenous community members and neighbors as we continue our work together as community of learners, leaders, and educators. And with that, we'll go over um, what will happen here. So we ask that you remain muted during the panel. There will be a Q&A at the end. You can enter questions in the Zoom chat directly to me or to uh, the uh, host and co-host, and they will come directly to us and we will share those questions and then the um, panelists will be able to answer. Um, so now what I will do is turn this over to our moderator, Jasmine Pratt. She is the co-founder of Black Winds, and she's also a property manager. She's also a UW Tacoma alumna who completed her bachelor's degree in communications in 2012. Welcome, Jasmine. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you so much for having me. Um, well, first, I want to introduce the panelists that are here with us today. Um, so the alumni panelists joining us are uh, Jamel Garris from class of 2016. He's a cybersecurity manager at UW Applied Physics Laboratory. Polly Pestas, uh, class of 2002. She's a prosecuting attorney. And Saranda Ross, class of 2015 and 19. She's an assistant managing attorney for the Tacoma Pro Bono Housing Project. So welcome to you all today. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I want to start today by seeing um, if you can let us know a little bit about uh, your time that you attended college and um, your career journey from when you graduated. Uh, Polly, let's start with you. Sounds good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, as Jasmine indicated, my name is Polly Peshtaz. I graduated um, UW Tacoma in 2002. Um, I actually started um, at Pierce College, uh, Community College in Puyallup, um, where I got my associate's degree. Uh, I then transferred over to UW Tacoma and I graduated in 2002. I had about a month off and I then decided um, to apply and go to law school. So I started Seattle University um, and graduated from Seattle U in 2005. Um, from there, I thought I wanted to do family law. So I did a few internships um, with a couple local uh, firms, decided that is not what I wanted to practice. Um, the opportunity came up uh, for me to uh, apply for a prosecutor job. I did realize that I do like being in the courtroom. Um, so I took advantage of that opportunity and I started working for the city of Tacoma in 2006. Uh, I was there um, actually until uh, December of 2019 after about 14 years. Um, I transitioned uh, then over to the city of Redmond um, where I started right before the pandemic. So January of 2022, which was a very interesting time. Um, and I've been uh, with the city of Redmond um, as a deputy prosecuting attorney um, since then. Thank you so much. Uh, Jamel, how about you go next? Thank you um, very much. My name is uh, Jamel Garris, as was mentioned earlier. Um, I got my bachelor's of uh, science and information systems management from University of Washington, Tacoma in 2014. 20, 20, uh, 2014 was University of Maryland, University College. I got my master's degree from the University of Washington in 2016 in cybersecurity. Um, backtracking a little bit, when I got out of the military in 2011, uh, I went for my associate's degree. I wanted to try and start a little easy. So I went to Central uh, Texas College to get my associate's degree in uh, liberal arts. Well, I tried to figure out what it was that I wanted to do. 
uh, I found out that I, I had a passion for IT. Um, so that's what led me to coming to complete my degree at University of Maryland, University College for my bachelor's in information systems management. Throughout that time, I, I worked in uh, the state and some nonprofits as well. Um, after roughly about 2015, I spoke with <clears throat> Dr. Barbara Endicott and Morgan Zantua, who got me interested in um, cybersecurity and what it could uh, what it could do for the country, right? And so I went ahead and I took my I took a, a year to go ahead and, and work through that degree. Uh, and afterwards, then I I took a break for a couple of years, worked for uh, the private sector, and then went to work back for the the state, and opted to go for my doctorate in information in information technology at CDU. So that's what I've been doing up until this point in time. Currently projected to graduate 2025, and thank you. That's awesome, and Sandy. So I started at uh, TCC and I earned my associate's degree and then transferred to UW Tacoma, graduated with my bachelor's in communications and a minor in human rights, and then took a gap year and went to UW Law um, starting in 2016 and then I graduated 2019. Um, then I clerked for two years at the Court of Appeals in downtown Tacoma. And um, then I moved on to my current position at Tacoma Pro Bono. Thank you. Um, Sarandi, you actually have something in common with me as well. I went to uh, TCC first and then transferred to UW and I got my, uh, I got my bachelor's in communication as well. Uh, so I will ask you first, <laughs> did you know what career you wanted to go into before you uh, started college? Uh, no, um, I, <laughs> I started at TCC and I just kind of was like, well, fuck, I gotta do something. I gotta figure something out. And so I started there and then I, uh, I actually, um, they have a paralegal program there and I was like, oh, okay, I'll be a paralegal, whatever. And I started that, but then I, or I started volunteering as well at Tacoma Pro Bono actually. Um, and I was like, oh, I really like this. And so I decided not to pursue the paralegal program. And then at that point I just was like, I'll just go to law school and, and then just went through, so. Polly, did you know uh, what you wanted to do before college? Sadly, yes, <laughs> I did. That's not bad. Um, I was one of those weird kids at a very young age um, that I just knew I wanted to go into law. So um, I, and it was a little bit challenging for me because no one else that I knew of as far as friends and family um, had the same interest in going into law. So I was kind of trying to maneuver and figure this out on my own um, as far as what I needed to do to get, you know, my law degree. So um, I, when I was at UW Tacoma, um, I know that we did start, a um, few of us that were interested in law, that were trying to navigate through it, um, started the Pre-Law Society, um, which was great. Um, and we were able to kind of network um, with some of the local attorneys that were in Tacoma to do some job shadowing and stuff, which even uh, piqued my interest more to do law. Um, and then just kind of plan my roadmaps. Um, probably my second year I was there at UW Tacoma as far as what I needed to do to get into law school. Nice. It seems that you pretty much kind of knew your path and like navigated <laughs> in that way, which is nice. It's way more yeah. organized than I was. <laughs> um, what kind of challenges did you face after graduation and so, navigating um, into your career? Yeah. So again, um, after graduation, so just even um, getting through the process of like what I needed to do, because I, like I mentioned, I had graduated and then immediately started law school. So the challenge for me was like what I needed to do while I was at UW Tacoma to be able to transition smoothly into law school. And unfortunately, there wasn't a whole lot of guidance because no one in my family had practiced law. I didn't know any friends that were in the area of law. So um, I kind of had to navigate that on my own and obviously touching base with some of the other people that were in the pre-law society which I said, again, was very helpful because they were also trying to navigate. So we're all kind of in this like messed together trying to figure out what we needed to do. Um, so that was kind of the challenging part is kind of just maneuvering on what I needed to do, what the requirements were that I needed to do to transition uh, into law school. Um, but I will say having a few friends who had the same interest was really helpful 
And again, starting that pre-law society, I actually didn't realize how many students were actually interested in pursuing law until we started um, that group. So that was really helpful. Nice. Um, Drell, how about you? Um, what are some, I know you're still working on <laughs> another degree now, but um, can you tell us a couple of challenges that you faced throughout your tenure of trying to you know, continue education? <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah, when I got out of the military, active duty in 2011, one of the hardest things was transitioning my work experience to uh, from the military to the civilian life. Many, many military folks experienced troubles like that. Um, I was infantry at the time, so my career field was pretty pretty narrow. Uh, police officer, maybe, um, or FBI, if I wanted to do that. But uh, before I even joined the military, I was working as a network network assistant network administrator at my high school, and I went through a program called Year Up, um, which is actually out here now in uh, Belltown, which allowed for me to touch base and, and work on IT. So when I got out of the military, uh, I decided to go start going for my associate's degree and focusing on IT. I was instructing, uh, and I had the opportunity to actually go back and start working for Year Up when they first begin to open out in Belltown. So I had the opportunity to go ahead and continue networking. And one of the things that was always taught to us was the power of networking, um, building the cohesion, building uh, a friendships, getting people to know and like you, um, and, and then also learning the job. So that was some of the, 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 not so much the struggle that I went through, but the path that I ended up having to go to, realizing that, okay, because of what I did in the military, it may not translate over into the civilian world. So I had to go relearn um, what it meant to be and operate in the civilian sector um, and then build a network of people who not only liked my work, but also enjoyed working with me. And you'll find that in the workplace that um, your work skill will take you so far, but people actually who enjoy working with you as well, um, that, that plays a part in it. Definitely. Um, I think we're all at a place where we can see how important networking is and how important to have your tribe and your people that have like-minded um, ideas and ways to go about things is very important to further develop yourself, but in your career as well. Um, Saranda, I wanted to ask you, um, because I heard from, I was going to ask this question to uh, Jamel, but I'm going to ask you, um, are you working or are you working in the same type of job that you had before graduation or before college? Or, and if not, uh, what made you transition to where you're doing now? No, so before college, I worked like everywhere. Uh, like, is that, yeah, so I was, uh, I worked at a bunch of restaurants and um, like food service and then during college as well. Um, so although I did do internships during my, um, during undergrad actually and law school um, at different, you know, firms and stuff like that. But um, that was your question, right? Just what, Am I, am I doing the same type of work? Yeah, just like, and if you're not, then well, sounds like you kind of were with the interning and whatnot. So um, it seems like you're still, you kind of knew what path you were going to take um, with your jobs before, since it was within your, um, your schooling at the time. Um, so what types of tools did you use for your career development? Um, I mean, I studied hard. And then uh, I networked I a lot. Like I was really aggressive uh, with networking during law school. And even before that, when I, 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 I realized that when I was volunteering at Tacoma Pro Bono that, um, because they have a lot of volunteer attorneys coming in. And so I met a lot of attorneys that way. Um, and I just, I guess I understood the importance of that early on. And I really um, just pursued that aggressively. Nice. Polly, uh, what kind of tools did you use for your job search? Um, I would just echo what was just said. Um, I think uh, networking and um, I would also use the word, maybe it's a legal thing, but just to be aggressive and also be patient. Um, with networking, I would agree. I try to reach out to as many um uh, fellow attorneys that I knew that were in the same type of practice. I job shadowed them to see if it's something I wanted to do. I um, actually talked to a lot of judges um, to just kind of get their perspective. 
Um, so I think networking is very important. Uh, number two, um, I would agree. I was pretty aggressive as far as, um, you know, whether attending events or whatnot to try to get out there and also put my name out there um, because the legal community is very small. Um, and so if you are able to connect with somebody, it goes a long way. And then the third thing is just patience. Um, it's not like the first internship or, you know, job opportunity that I want just landed, you know, right in my hands. Um, there's going to be times where, you know, you may not necessarily get the internship or the job that you initially want to write off the back. But as I would, I would just point out, I think volunteering um, is important. I think just maybe even doing internships where you're not necessarily paid. I know there's at least four internships I did that I didn't get paid, but I still did it because I was from there. I was able to meet certain people that landed me to my next job. So I think those are the three tools that I would probably point out. Nice. Um, since you are the one that pretty much knew your career path um, are pretty early on, um, who or what inspired you to pursue that career um, or in the, and in the job field that you're in? So I think what um, first kind of inspired me was um, we had a, a local um, friend of ours who did practice laws, my dad's friend, and he was very dedicated to his work. Um, he was very passionate about it. And so I guess I just really appreciated his work ethic and what he did. I would say currently who inspires me is actually my husband, who's also a practicing attorney. Um, and just to kind of see his dedication, um, uh, to his work and also his passion too, he's definitely motivated, motivated me to be a better attorney and a better person. So I think I would put. Nice. That's awesome to have a partner in the same field too. <laughs> yeah. Two different, two different types of law, thankfully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want to be arguing in the household too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Jamel, you kind of mentioned a little bit um, earlier in one of your answers about uh, what inspired you to pursue your um, career field, but can you just elaborate a little bit further on like your, your inspiration and how that came about? Absolutely. Um, I was in the infantry um, earlier on. And what I enjoyed about it was the ability to help and protect folks. Um, that's something that I think I still hold dear to this day. And that carried me on into the IT field and more specifically cybersecurity. Um, and as you've heard Polly and Sandra mention uh, earlier, a lot of it was networking. I, I think out of all the jobs that I've got, except for one recently, most of them were word of mouth and or people referring me to other people said this is a good guy he also knows what he's doing and he'll be able to get the job done um so that was very very helpful um and with that uh finding mentors and advisors as well they were very very helpful in steering me in a in a good path to to navigate my career um to be where it is that i am right now so uh, does that answer the question that you yes it does <laughs> Um, I wanted to ask you, so when it was time to start getting to work and after graduation, um, how did you get started? Uh, was it networking and getting in through connections? I know you mentioned a few of your positions were like that, but your most current, is that how you were able to get this position as well? Absolutely. Uh, actually, the funny thing is, so working at Central Washington University as a network manager, I got that job because uh, in the National Guard, I was working and someone saw my work ethic and said, hey, you should apply for this job at Central Washington University. This might be a good fit for you. Did that, uh, worked there for roughly about two years. Um, and then an, uh, an opportunity opened up at UW. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't looking at UW. I didn't even think I was gonna be able to get into UW. I had applied before and it got shot down like at least two or three different times. Uh, this time, someone had reached out to me who was also a fellow member of a network that I had who said, hey, are you interested in, you know, you still do cybersecurity, are you interested in, in coming to work at UW because we have a position that's opening up? I went and I got a chance to interview with the hiring manager and she and I clicked immediately. Um, and that's how it happened. She said, hey, I heard about you from this person. Um, you know, you seem like you're a decent fit. You seem like a, you're a good fit. Uh, she interviewed, I went through the interview process and 
I got hired on. Um, and that, that's how I got there today. Nice. That's awesome. Um, I love hearing stories like that. Um, Saranda, what are you most profound of professionally? Excuse me, what are you most proud of professionally? Um, I really like what I'm doing right now. I So I keep people housed is like basically the whole purpose of my job. Eviction prevention is what we work on. Um, and that's um, I guess important to me. I was homeless at some parts of my life, so um, I know what, um, to an extent, what my clients are facing. Um, obviously, situations are different. Um, I, you know, I don't have kids, for example, and I'm not like homeless with children, but I have experienced it. So um, it's really fulfilling for me to fight for them. Um, and I also was awarded a Fulbright Award, which was really cool. So that's awesome. It always feels good to be able to give back, especially when you can relate to the clientele. I feel like that's something that makes it a little, especially in the courtroom, I feel like that could build a connection with clients and whatnot. Um, Polly, what about you? Um, what are you most proud of professionally? I think uh, professionally for me is I deal a lot with domestic violence victims. So I think for me um, in my role is just being able to help them um, and hold the abuser accountable. And it's important to me that they have a voice uh, and they're able to come forward with their stories and to be able to be part of that story for them um, has been really rewarding professionally for me. Um, I have had occasions uh, in court where I've had victims say that no one, ever, no one has ever stood up for them. Um, but for me, and so to hear that, um, it's, it's rewarding for me personally, but also professionally as well. That's awesome. And I want to ask you the same question, Jamel. I think it's important to hear about what everybody feels, um, is the most proud of in your guys' career. To be honest, I'm, I'm just happy to be here. Um, <laughs> I'm serious. I'm happy to be able to, to, to do this. One of my greatest passions is um, inspirational speaking. Uh, I used to do it when I was younger as a kid. I grew up in the projects, um, mother of five in Boston, Mass. I am a Patriots fan. I got the book on record saying that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm a Husky though, I'm a Husky. Um, with that being said, I having come from where I was to where it is that I am now and having the opportunity as you've heard the, the different panelists, Polly and Sandra say, um, being able to, to, to accomplish your goals or begin to accomplish your goals and then be able to reach back and say, hey, you can do it, um, is, is very powerful. Uh, working at Europe, I had the opportunity to mentor and advise several different students and I keep in contact with them to, 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 to today and to see their progression, to see what they went through because Europe is a, a one-year intensive training program for 18 to 24 year old um, under privileged youth and urban youth. And so it, it provides them with an avenue, an avenue and the skills in order to be able to go into the professional workplace, either children who didn't have homes or anything like that, or going through rough times. So to be able to see them progress and stay in contact with you is something that, that it's, it's one of those life gems right there. It sounds like everybody's jobs are fulfilling, which is always wonderful to hear because I've worked a lot of jobs and I've also worked in careers. So <laughs> it's good to see that everybody is happy where they are. Um, I want to kind of transition a little bit into um, the pandemic since everyone in the entire world was affected by it. Um, how, how were you guys, or it was any of your um, careers affected um, or did you have to make any specific changes in the way that you do your job during the pandemic? And I want to ask this to uh, Jamel first. It was a whirlwind. Um, on the civilian side, uh, we had to transition, our team had to transition everyone from being present to working remotely. Uh, there was a lot of stress that went along with that and having to deal with it. And then on top of that, you know, Uncle Sam called. And so I, I, put on my uniform and would help out with the food banks as well. And, you know, with the riots and stuff like that, I was in Seattle during those period of times that that, that stuff was happening. Um, so it, it was 
pretty intense on both angles and then trying to take care of family as well. So it, 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 I don't know if I'm answering your question directly, but that was, it was pretty intense for us to, to have to do, but you learn to take it one day at a time. Um, what I've learned was to, to breathe and, and to not only encourage those around you, but also encourage yourself as well. I want to ask this uh, to Saranda too, because I know you work directly with um, residents of apartment buildings and tenants and stuff. So can you kind of um, just to let everybody know how it changed for you um, in your career field, the pandemic? Yeah, so um, obviously it, like you said, it definitely impacted um, tenants across Washington state um, and the entire United States. But um, we, we, I know that Tacoma Pro Bono struggled initially to transition everything virtually, um, but now that we do have that set up, we, it's, it's actually easier for clients, at least meeting with attorneys. We do a lot of phone calls. We meet with people over Zoom sometimes, sometimes, and um, it's, I guess it's broadened like accessibility because we also still do, are doing in person. But initially when we were not able to do that, it was, it was difficult for clients. It, it's been um, overall, like it's, it's becoming better. Um, but we're still really navigating when, when COVID or I guess everything really started happening. I wasn't at Tacoma Pro Bono, I was clerking. And so it was, it was actually easy for the court to just go virtually, um, go virtual with everything. But you know, when you're working with people who might not have a phone um, it's, it's different. And sometimes, you know, we have to go to clients' houses sometimes, which is rare, but like, you know, sometimes it calls for it. So we just have to be flexible. Holly, what about you? So mine was, I'm sure like a lot of people, there was just a lot of uncertainty. Um, like I mentioned before, I had just started this new job when the pandemic hit. Um, and I'll never forget, I remember I was sitting in court when everything just kind of shut down and um, it was just confusing. We didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know really anything. And so um, the transition to Zoom uh, for the court was um it was interesting, um, but it's a it's amazing how quickly we were able to do that and all work from home, be able to still do our jobs. Um, I do think that Zoom, for at least from my experience in our courts, will probably continue um, for here on out because I do think it is beneficial in certain ways. Um, for example, we have a lot of defendants that come into court and unfortunately a lot of them when they do have a case they have to take their a whole day off to come in for maybe a half hour hearing for their case to be continued and that does affect their job um, or if they don't have child care they're not able to come into the courtroom and what I've seen is now that they are able to appear on zoom we are getting a higher participation level because people can take a lunch break and zoom on to court and be able to go back to work and not have to risk taking the whole day off, um, which could affect their employment. So I see that long-term, this will probably continue on. Um, now that we are back um, in the court, um, I personally like, I think it's much easier being able to talk to different attorneys and be able to navigate through cases much easier. Um, but I will say in the beginning, it was, Again, it was just uncertainty. We didn't really know how this was going to happen. I mean, we were all trying to figure this out at the same time. Um, and like I said, for me personally, it was a scary time because I didn't know what was going to happen to my position since I just started, if there was going to be budget cuts and, and whatnot. So a lot of uncertainty, but also um, I was very proud of how our office was able to handle it so quickly. Do you feel like, because I know you, cause, because you mentioned the fact that um, there was a little bit of uncertainty there, do you feel like the field that you're in, that um, there was possibly some impact from like maybe layoffs or anything like that that you guys would have been concerned about? Well, I know, um, I, I can't speak for other jurisdictions, but I'm assuming that many different jurisdictions had budget issues. Every city, I from my understanding, probably went through some some issues with that. So um, I know there were definitely some some cuts that had to be made. Um, 
thankfully we were all okay. I would say during COVID crimes obviously did not stop. <laughs> so we were actually much busier um, during the pandemic than we were pre pandemic. So yeah, I mean, thankfully everything worked out, but um, like I said, we are a pretty high volume um, courtroom. And so it, it was like all hands on deck during the pandemic. So yeah. That's interesting. I just was curious to know about that kind of stuff because I know, you know, my personal industry that I'm in is property management. And um, I just, and I, I, we all saw how the hospitality industry, restaurants, you know, how that was impacted. So I was just really curious to see how um, criminal law was affected. Um, but I want to transition out of that because speaking on the pandemic is always so dreary you know it's, it's a tough time that we all went through and um so I want to transition into talking about some advice that you guys would give to the 2022 graduates so um Jamal I want to start with you since you're still on your journey continuing your education uh what advice would you give to the 2022 graduates as they leave college and move into their uh starting careers go back to every single one of your teachers and get all their contact information <laughs> that would be the very first thing I would recommend uh secondly if you remember any of your classmates and they were okay with you and you were okay with them, go back and get all their information <laughs> as well. That would be the first two things I would say. Why? Because as they continue on their, their journey and their career, if they know you and if they remember you even slightly, that's an opportunity for you. If it's a cup of coffee, if it's a hello, it's, if it's just a, hey, I'm checking in to see how you're doing, that can make a difference in someone's life. And it's usually those facets, those, those small conversations that help you and them down the road. That, so that would be one of the key bits of advice that I would provide. Get their contact information and stay in contact. Zeranda, what about you? Any advice? Uh, yeah, well, hopefully you've already been not working, um, at, you know, and basically collecting like letters of recs from your professors, um, or at least have a relationship established with them to where they will do that. Um, so just continue networking, go to I, like events are starting to happen again. So get invited, go to those, show up to them, even if you're not invited and, um, yeah, just, just really heavy on the networking. Um, uh, Polly, what about you? Uh, same thing. I would just say, stay connected, um, to your mentors, stay connected to those who helped you get this far. Um, I think a point that Jamal made earlier is word of mouth does travel fast. Um, I think it was said earlier that, you know, resumes are one thing. We have obviously the credentials and whatnot, but what makes you stand apart from that? And a lot of times it really is your personality and how you're able to engage with other people. So um, I, I think the other thing I would just point out is that if you do get volunteer opportunities or internships, take advantage of those. I know some of them don't pay, um, but the benefit again is by doing those, again, it segues back into meeting people and networking with those who could um, obviously um, uh, recommend you for, for certain positions in the future. Okay, so let's say that uh, students graduate and they network their butts off and then they get a few references and then they get an interview. So I know people usually say, what should you say? But I want to know what are some don'ts? What shouldn't you do at an interview? That aren't the obvious, of course. <laughs> like wear street clothes, you know? <laughs> hmm. That's a tough question. Someone else want to take this one first? I, I have one. Yeah. So we, okay. so um, we, I inter we interview people often for, or not often, but we interview people. And um, I, I mean, I'm on the hiring team is what I mean. And don't show up to an interview. And when they ask you like, oh, well, what do you know about us? Like, don't not have anything to say. Like, mm. that's such a, it's kind of Dear a red flag for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. like some people would just be like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, why did you apply? <laughs> so um, just have something to say ab about the company or, you know, organization. Just know the basics at the least. So, Yeah, I definitely can say that that shows that you actually care and want the job when you do something like that. <laughs> um, will, do you know any advice? Say, oh, go ahead, Polly. <laughs> I will say one thing, because just because this came up, it was interesting. Um, there was a position that we were 
fulfilling. And I understand that telecommute is very popular right now. Um, and a lot of people want to work from home, but also read the job description. And if the job description requires you to be in person um, and that's not something you want to do, I don't know. Maybe just I would just read the job yeah, description okay. and don't don't ask the telecommute if you know that, that that's not an option. It just it came up recently. So that was just kind of one of those things. Yeah. Sometimes we must state the obvious, though, you know, like to to us, it might seem obvious, but you know, to people who are actually on the job hunt. I, I've been on the job hunt before and sometimes you just get to just put in yeah. applications and not realizing, but it is important to read everything before you just submit the resume because yeah. if, if you're applying for something that you're actually not even a, a little bit interested in, then it, it kind of is a waste of everyone's time. You know, everyone that's coming to look for someone that went through your resume and qualifications, but also you don't want the position. So now everyone's like, okay, you know? <laughs> yeah. And I would, I would just say, make a commitment to the company. I mean, I wouldn't say like, you know, I'm just applying for this to be here for like a year or two. And then and after that, I'm, I want to go do this because to the employer, it doesn't really sound, I mean, it's not a good re re use of resources for them if they know you're not going to be there long-term. And if you're just there as kind of a, you know, to get on to the, like the next step. So Definitely. Um, okay, Jamal, go ahead. <laughs> I say um, don't not go there ready to interview the company as well. It's definitely one thing to, to learn about the, the history, but it's another thing to learn about your, your job description, as you've heard. And then to come in with some, some questions about what it is that you're doing. Do you, you know, just like that they're interviewing you, you're interviewing them to see whether or not the job is a, is a fit as well. And I know you know, coming out of uh, for coming out of college, just graduating, it's really really exciting. Um, but it, it's it's a what I feel like it is 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 a, it's a confidence thing. Is saying, hey, look, this is a job that I'm interested in, and I want to do it. I believe I can do it. I know that I can learn, and I can be of an asset. Can we mutually help each other out? Um, going into it with that mindset, I think will set you apart from someone who just comes in and doesn't have any questions for them at the end of it, or the questions aren't really geared towards what it is that, uh, or allowing for the company to see that you are vested in uh, working there and working with them. Okay, so I've run into something like this before. They actually answered all of my questions that I had in my mind. So any advice, like any quick questions that you could say that are good to ask, even though you know, it might have been not might have been one of your main questions since they already answered it, but something that they can show that they are showing that they are, you know, you, you always want to ask questions. So if you're like, oh, Donnie, answer my questions. Is there like a specific kind of bullet point that you can ask to kind of make sure that you do that? Sure. One question I ask is, why did you join this job? Mm -hmm. ah. What made you interested in this job? Like, tell me, tell me on why it is that it's a good idea to be here. Because we've all been and done interviews, and some people have done interviews. It's just been like, I don't, I don't really want to be here. But when you go, you ask that question. You're able to to ascertain like the, the vibe, the energy, the the passion behind what it is that they do, and you may be able to speak to that and and pivot off of that as well. So definitely ask them why they're there. I like that. I'm gonna keep that in my own heart. <laughs> um, my final question for the night to each of you: um, What were some of the activities that you were involved in while attending college that helped you prepare for your career? And since you just answered our last question, you can go ahead and go first. <laughs> well, um, I actually joined a fraternity when I was going through my, uh, my master's program. Uh, and that helped me um, get more in tune with helping out with the community. Uh, before then, I was running around doing everything under the sun, trying to, trying to make it. Um, when I when I volunteered and when I joined the fraternity, um, we started doing community service and and helping out, doing some outreach. And I'm really, really, uh, I was. It was somewhat fulfilling because it allowed me to slow down. Um, and so it, it helped to also reinforce in my mind to continue to give back. Uh, and so that's that's what I did. That's a little bit of the, 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 the things that I've done. Holly, what about you? So while I was at uh, UW Tacoma, um, so I ran for student body president, which was a lot of fun <laughs> in 2002. 
So I got to serve in that role, which was, which was great. I got to meet um, in network and do that. Um, I did, I talked to you guys a little bit about the pre-law society um, that we created, uh, which was great. Um, and then after law school, um, I did uh, the Washington Leadership Institute. So you apply for that. Um, and they select a group of, I wanna say about 15 to 20 um, kind of newer attorneys. Um, and one of the great things about that program is um, you get to network like crazy with a lot of the judges um, and other attorneys in your field. Um, so that was a great program. Um, I got to meet a lot of new mentors uh, out of that that I still uh, keep in contact with, so. Miranda, did you um, yeah, have any no, activities? No, and you don't, you don't have to comment now. I was working full time. Um, but I, well, I guess I've also, I did volunteer on, in addition to that um, for two years. And then school related, when I was at UW Law, I, um, I did mock trial. And that was, I think that was really helpful and stressful, but helpful. Uh, no. fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's both. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I did also volunteered um, with the Immigrant Families Advocacy Project. And I think that was it for law school um, in terms of what, what's helpful now. Oh, oh I did um, the, one of the, I was on a journal as well, which helped with my writing, um, but also stressful. So it's like, it just, that's all law school is, is like stress, it's stress and reading and writing, but it, it worked out in the end, so. <laughs> Great. Well, we're going to now open it up to the audience if you have any questions for any of the panelists or even myself. Awesome. Thank you all for this uh, presentation. Um, I'm Andre. I'm the current student body president. So really excited to see a past president here <laughs> and that you're doing well and so successful. Um, but my question was um, for any one of the four of you, um, actually, like, as you know, many of us are getting ready to graduate and either go on to grad school, law school, or um, into our career. How did you, because many of you talked about, you know, working somewhere out of um, undergrad or grad or law school that maybe wasn't the right fit. How did you navigate that process? And then how did you know when you got to where you are now, um, why that was a good fit? Like, can, can you walk us through kind of that process of like, this isn't the right fit, but I'll stay here for a little bit and try to figure out where I belong. Um, well, I can go first. So I think I mentioned that I started right after graduating doing family law. Um, and I think I mentioned that was not after being there for a couple of months. And I had a great mentor at that time. And she was one of the managing partners at that firm. Um, who she's now actually a judge in Superior Court. Um, I was very honest with her um, during my internship um, and she was fantastic about telling me that, you know, there's many different areas of law. This is not the only one. And you really do need to enjoy what you're doing because you're going to be doing it on a daily basis. So if this is not something you want to do, it's good that you did this internship so that you know, um, and you also know this is not what you want to do. As far as how I found out that my current job is the right fit, I just, I enjoy, as stressful as it is, I enjoy going to work every day. Um, I still, after all these years, um, am still very passionate about what I do. Um, I think it's still important to be challenged every day. And I feel like in my role, um, I am being challenged every day because I never know what's going to happen on a daily basis. I never know what type of cases are going to come through and whatnot. So I think you will know once you kind of get situated in your role and it is okay um, to maybe, and I wouldn't say don't, don't feel bad if you're in a position right at the outset of graduation that you're not like, this is not where I want to necessarily be. Um, sometimes it just does take a little bit of time, but when you go through that process, you also learn more about yourself and, um, what it is that you, that you do and you don't want to do for your career. I wouldn't mind going next. Um, 
to to touch on what Paulie said, I mean, I when I was going through my my undergrad or starting to work on my master's degree, I wasn't in cybersecurity. I actually was working for Nintex in Bellevue uh, as a customer service engineer and working on SharePoint of all things. I despise SharePoint <laughs> with a passion, but working there, um, one of the things that I did do was try to take advantage of any opportunity that would present itself to allow for me to work on the skill sets that I was doing in my master's program, i.e. speaking with the, the IT team and asking, okay, well, hey, you know, we have a project, can we do a vulnerability assessment against the organization? And and then working in, in and having the opportunity to do that and produce their product, which then you could use as a, as a story platform for later on. Well, yes, I was working as a customer service engineer, I had the opportunity to, to engage in this and it opened up doors to do other things like SOX 2 compliance and, and other things like that, which eventually I was able to share at the, the job that I'm at now. Um, I also had the opportunity to, to reach back to the university during that period of time and, and help with the active shooter webpage before we went through and we did a uh, practice drill. We had updated it, I think back in, in 20, 2016-ish um, with, the, with the then director uh, and you just take those little bits that you can while you're working, wherever it is you're working on to, to help build your portfolio when you go to, to speak, um, to, to apply for whatever job it is that you're looking to do. Um, I can, I can speak a, a little bit on it too. Um, because I didn't know that, um, I was going to be in property management like I am, um, and I started with my mom. Uh, she owns a management company in Lakewood. And so I started doing that actually after school, going to UW. I would go after school and just do all the filing. It was 2008. So there were still papers. <laughs> we weren't, everything wasn't digital. So um, I was filing papers every day to put my headphones on and just filing. And then um, I needed a job as soon as I graduated. And so uh, she hired me on just, you know, to make some money. And um, I knew I didn't want to be a bookkeeper at my mom's job. I definitely knew that. Um, but I then, uh, I went to school for communications, but I had a passion for radio. And um, so that was kind of like my focus. I then went to Green River and I got a um, broadcast uh, degree there. And um, then I got my first tech job doing what I was doing for the radio station, but actually getting paid to do it. So that was my first real job. Um, working in Seattle and like within a tech company. So you walk in and there's like beer on tap. And <laughs> it was very, very a different experience, but it was still work, you know, and I had a great experience there. Um, and then I moved to LA, which is where I live now. And um, I'm still in property management. I went back to my roots and, but, you know, I've excelled in my career. I manage a 78 unit um property in Brentwood which is like a really high-end neighborhood out there and um I I can definitely see the steps that it took for me to get here um but also with my nonprofit Black Winds all the interviews that I was doing for free in Tacoma and in Seattle with these local artists helped me get to where I am now where I can go to the Black Panther Party convention and speak to Black Panthers and tell kids about what the Black Panther Party did for their parents to get them to, the, to be in a place where they are today. You know, so it's, you, as you start to grow and have personal development within yourself, you start to see, you know, the things that you did for free or the things that you did that kind of you didn't maybe know were going to make a difference in your life later, completely um, transition to what is happening in the current and the now. So I would just say, you know, don't take the little things for granted because they definitely do matter later in life. So I have a question. Um, you guys talked about how important it is to network and um, stay in touch with the faculty, um, the, your professors and things like that. What about the connection to your peers that you went to school with? How does that look in your life? I know that you say go back and find your friends or uh, if you, you need to connect with them. Um, what does it look like to connect with alumni um, in your life? Do you mean just in, in general or? In general, let's just say in general, not just your peers, but alumni. Like, 
we have the Husky alumni panel that we're doing right now, and this is an opportunity to connect um, things like that. So what does that look like being an alum, maybe showing up to events or how do you connect with others? Social media. <laughs> I like that. Uh, really like all my peers and stuff. That's, that's kind of how I stay connected with them or like LinkedIn, I guess. Um, but aside from that, I haven't, I feel like there hasn't been many like events, at least since I graduated to attend. Um, but once things get going, I'll probably do that again. So. Yeah. Okay, and I'll share a little bit more about our events at the end of this, because we do have a lot of events. It's just some are virtual, but uh, I'll share more about that after. I'd say for myself too, LinkedIn, um, I connect a lot with some of my uh, fellow colleagues um, via LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, Facebook a lot more than LinkedIn, but I do have some on there. Facebook because I graduated in 2012, so LinkedIn wasn't as popular uh, at that time, but um, it's great to see what people are doing, but also um, like in their personal life, but a lot of my colleagues are still talking about what they're doing career-wise, and it's just really cool to see like someone who I was studying with at, in the lunchroom to now see like, you know, they're buying their first home, but they went to school and, you know, with me, and I just connect with people that way most of the time, and now I'm now I'm back on um, with Husky Landing. <laughs> that was one thing I was glad to be reconnected with because um, I got disconnected when I moved because my email address changed. So now that I'm back on the list, I will be attending more virtual events. <laughs> I won't say that I've been attending a lot of different events, uh, alumni events. Um, usually I, I maintain uh, a pretty good relationship with many of my classmates on LinkedIn. And whether it's a, hey, you know, how's it going? Or the NFL uh, fantasy football, got the way for us to be in contact uh, or social media. We, we usually cross across those three platforms. And um, it's good to, to see these. I actually, uh, I would love to uh, to come through and, and be a part of these. Yeah, I mean, I graduated in 2002, but I still do have a group uh, that graduated my year that I still talk to. So um, I would just echo what everybody else is saying. I think just, you know, social media and LinkedIn, it's always just kind of nice to see where they're at, what career opportunities they've taken. Um, I have a couple friends that I graduated from in 2002 who are still local in the area. So um there's been a few times where we've met up, not recently, but um, just stayed connected just by grabbing some lunch or dinner. So, well, um, I just want to thank everybody for coming, and especially to um, the panelists today, Polly, Jamal, Saranda. It was great meeting you and connecting with you guys today, and getting to know you and your career choices. And uh, I will look to follow and find everybody on LinkedIn to just stay connected and. Um, I hope that we can continue, you know, following up with each other now that we're all alumni here meeting each other, but, you know, just making sure that we maintain those connections and like we said, continue to uh, network with one another. So um, I'm going to give it back to Shauna. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This was awesome. Uh, we need to have more of these. I just didn't want to <laughs> make everybody tired of Zoom. So, but um, there will be some more opportunities. We have been doing events virtually through the pandemic, but we've also done some in person and there are some opportunities coming up. I did put some links in the chat for you. Andre Jimenez, our student body president is here. So I wanted to definitely give a shout out to the class of 2022 for the senior class gift efforts. You see the W behind me. Uh, they are doing a campaign to for an engraving that says you belong here about inclusivity and making sure that students feel confident that they belong here. Uh, you can go to the page to learn more about it uh, or if you want to support their campaign, it's there. Um, the 2022 grad experience is still going on. This is the first one in the, um, the, the list of events. You're welcome to attend as alumni, students can attend, community members can attend. We do have one tomorrow about cracking the professional development code. That's about professional development. That's a really good one um, to, for anyone to attend, alumni, 
Um, there are some new things coming up from the Professional Development Center that you will definitely want to know about. Uh, that is during the lunch hour from 12.30 to 1.30 p.m. and it is virtual. If you click that grad experience link, you'll see a list of all of the events for the grad experience. Um, I think I've covered everything. The Tacoma Husky Landing is the networking platform that we use. It's gonna be important for, we have some community on there, a lot of alumni, faculty, staff, that's a good way to connect to them on there. There's also business owners, um, friends of the university. It's a good way to start talking about how to get that first job or what the opportunities are or to share experiences. Um, take a look at that if you haven't done it already. Um, and feel free to reach out to our alumni on Tacoma Husky Landing. Uh, with that, um, I will just say thank you again, and I'll bid you adieu, and hopefully I'll see you at the grad experience events. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.